Good day folks, welcome along to the vlog. Today is still Friday, uh, but I'm doing Saturday's vlog today on Friday because yesterday I filled the vlog with the recipe development. And then I started doing something else which I thought was really too good to miss. So I thought, well, instead of not having a vlog on Saturday because I'll be off with the kids, then I can just put this in. So here is what we're doing. Right, summer's coming round. All the tanks in the brewery are getting warmer and warmer. We've just had that vacant gesture sat in the tanks for three weeks now, conditioning. And uh, the outside of the tank was covered in condensation. So that means that there's definite heat transfer going on there between the atmosphere in the brewery and the outside of the tanks, reducing its efficiency. So to combat that, we're going to insulate the cones. Now, the reason the cones aren't insulated at the moment is because it's very difficult to get some insulation that looks good on a, uh, a rounded surface, if you know what I mean. You can't really clad it with timber because it's just too much of a difficult operation. So what we've gone and done is bought some uh, foam. This foam is what they use to insulate camper vans and such. It's sticky on one side, this yellow side, and on the other side, it's silver with an eight millimeter polyurethane, I think, or expanded neoprene foam in the center, which is rot proof, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so I need to be able to cut the cone out the right shape to fit on top of the cone that we've got. So way back when we made the cones for the brewery out of steel, I went for exactly the same process and that was marking out the circle using a little bit of a cheat sheet from a fantastic website called Craig Russell. So if you go onto that website there, they've got a cone calculator to construct a flat pattern for a cone. So it gives you everything that you need to know if you put three inputs in. The inputs are the length or the diameter of the hole at the bottom of the cone. It's at the top here, but it's because it's sat big base down. The diameter at the bottom of the cone and the height of the cone. Well, I happen to know that my tanks are 800 mil in diameter. The length of that section there takes a three inch, a two inch to four inch uh, reducer, which is welded on before it goes to the RJT. So that's four inches across there, or 100 mils close enough. And the total height is 260 mil, giving us, I think we calculated an angle of something like 17 or 20 degrees which is what we wanted in the, uh, it might have been 45 degrees actually. Anyway, regardless of that, doesn't matter. It's a bit of an off shot. It's a bit of a tangent, talking of angles, don't you get it? Anyway, uh, <laughs> cut a long story short, if you wouldn't mind, what we've had to do essentially is figure out how big the circle's gonna be and what we've got to chop out of it. So plugging these numbers into the calculator tells you uh, how big a circle to draw on your piece of work. Now the length, the diameter of B, okay, is 800 mil. So you'd automatically think your circle wants to be 800 mil across or with a radius of 400. But no, remember, we're going to lose some of that diameter when we chop a little section of the, the cone out and put, pull the two edges together. So this calculator takes that into consideration for you and you'll notice it's spat out the radius two, which is the total radius from the center to the outside of the, of the main circle, 498 millimeters. Let's call it 500 millimeters. Good enough for the girls I go out with. So that is our initial circle. So I've basically just got a piece of pipe with an hole in the end, stuck a screw through it, stuck it straight in the middle there and then we've used that to scribe our circle to the correct size that we want. And the inner circle here, well that's not 100 mil across, that needs to be 124 mil across or thereabouts. Calculator said 62 mil radius. So there we go, we've got that in place. And now we need to cut out the degrees where do we draw the lines to cut out the little sliver, if you like? Well, it tells you here, look, your arc angle 
288 degrees. So we're going to go from, let's pick any arbitrary starting point, we're going to go 288 degrees around our 360 degree circle and wherever that stops is what we're going to cut out. But I don't have an angle finder here so I'm doing it the old fashioned way. I know if I draw a line straight through the centre of the circle then I've split it into two semicircles and that line marks out a 180 degree radius. If I come 90 degrees from the centre of the circle to the top uh, at a right angle to that first line then we've got 90 degrees there so now we've narrowed it down 90 degrees. Remember we wanted 288 degrees or 288.99 let's call it 289 degrees of the arc angle so I've taken 289 away from 360 and that left 71 degrees so we're trying to find from that zero point there 71 degrees of angle well we've just made 90 so we know from there to there is 90 degrees that we've got to cut out that's still too big I know what we can do we can measure from one point to the other there on these two points that intersect the circumference and we can find the middle of that and if we do that and we run a line directly through that and the centre bingo we've got 45 degrees that's too little well we do the same thing again we intersect the 45 and the 90 and uh, find the centre point draw it through the middle that intersects with the circumference then we've got another 22 and a half degrees which brings us up to 67.5 degrees and we're almost there so now we've got 22 and a half degrees left over to make up we're only we're only four degrees three and a half degrees away so I'll measure across here that's 210 so 210 gives me 105 there we go stick a line down through the middle of that 105 and then that was 22.5 degrees so now that is 11.25 so if we add that onto there 67 that's 78 78.75 degrees well that's a little bit too much you can see where I'm going with this can't you we're going to measure again it's 105 so out of 105 millimeters chop that in half we've got 52 and a half 52 and a half again straight through the center split 11.25 let's call it 11 so we've got five and a half five and a half degrees there so add that onto our 67 I hope you're keeping up with me because I'm finding it difficult to keep up with myself add that onto the 67 uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 uh, so that makes 73 degrees there we go, we're getting closer all the time we want 71 I could measure again and then do another mark but I've got an easier way now we're just going to split this let's call that 68 okay and that's 73 so we've got five degrees here so we'll just split it into five one two three four maybe that was a little bit one two three four there we go so we'll split it into five like think of them as minutes on a clock so we're looking for 71 73 72 71 we've got there. I know it seems long-winded but trust me it's super simple and just using mathematics. So now I can see that my 71 degree line is, let's mark it out, here and here so that's what we've got to cut out to make our cone 
Fingers crossed, let's test it. Rob, right, going in, folks. That's Gemma casking, by the way. There we go, there's one. That's two. Come on, baby. There we go. So that is our off cut. You can now see the shiny silver foil side that's going to show on the outside of the tank. I think they look pretty good. And now what I need to do is bring what's left of this foam up to me and cut the circle out. And I think that's going to be easy enough to freehand it feels nice to cut this stuff. Not a problem. Just make sure that all the way through, all the way through the tin, or the, the foil sheeting, should I say. Got to run around the camera there. This is looking pretty good. Is it going to come away? Come on, my little bambino. Come on now. Oh, and there we are. Ah, Paco Mano! You are a good up boy! I bring you up good up boy! <laughs> there we go, we've got giant Pac Man ready to be turned. Take his eyeball off. Ready to be turned into. Fingers crossed, folks. Into, oh, I've got to cut the internal circle out. Otherwise, it won't work. Need something to hinge on, you see. And this internal circle, well, that's what it acts as. Kind of a an area for the foam to wrap around itself and hinge. So there, we have it. Uno cono. Very difficult to form these cones though, because they just want to crease in one area. But you kind of get the picture, don't you? There we go, so that's actually inside out. So let's flip it round. See if we can't get it on the tank. That has to kind of be that way. It's difficult to do it though, I need some help. Was in a little bit of a rush to get it on because uh, we've got to go and pick the kids up from school. But it looks the bees. So check it out. You'd never know it weren't steel, would you? Apart from the colour, it's definitely reflecting the floor a lot more than that one does. Oh mind you, it's not too bad. I think it looks alright. Just a little bit of silver foil to trim it and cover up these edges. And that's it, jobs are good in. Right, there we are. I'm just going to quickly rinse this pump out and then I'm going home. We'll see you on the next vlog, folks. I've got to call it a day because I'm running late. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.